Hey guys, it's me, Poppy Rain here, coming to you with another story from the Book of Chilton's Classics. We're actually not going to be reading the next story in the book. The next story in the book is Fudge, which is like the first, I think, like two chapters of Tales of the Fourth Grade Nothing. So if you'd like to see that, if you'd like to hear that, you can go see that. Um, you can find the videos on my channel. I've read the first couple chapters. I think the first, like, four or five chapters of Tales of Fourth Grade, nothing on the channel already. So, we're going to skip to the next one, which is Homer Price. From Homer Price by Robert... McClosely. Um, and as always, I'm going to skip parts of the... About, and just read the parts that are important, because this is not a full story. This is just bits and pieces. About Homer Price. Where'd you get the crazy idea? A child once asked Robert McClosely about Homer Price's adventure with his uncle's amazing automatic donut machine. The donuts was inspired, as were many of stories of McClosely's, wrote and illustrated by memories of his childhood. Once on a boyhood camping trip, McClosely was following the recipe for fried donuts in a lumberjack's cookbook. Sure that the recipe would make enough, the enterprising young man doubled the ingredients. Little did he know, the donut batter increased in size as it cooked. McClosely also had, like the character, Uncle Ulysses' advanced idea and a weakness for labor-saving devices. One of McClosely's childhood obsessions was inventing. I collected old electric motors and bits of wire, old clocks, and Meccano sets. I built trains and cranes with remote controls. My family's Christmas tree revolved. Lights flashed and buzzers buzzed. Fuses blew and sparks flew. Homer Price. Meet Homer Price. About two miles outside of Centerburg, where Route 56 meets Route 56A, there lives a boy named Homer. Homer's father owns a tourist camp. Homer's mother cooks fried chicken and hamburgers in the lunchroom and takes care of the tourist cabins. While his father takes care of the filling station. Homer does odd jobs about the place. Sometimes he washes windshields of cars to help his father. And sometimes he sweeps out cabins or takes care of the lunchroom to help his mother. The Donuts One Friday night in November, Homer overheard his mother talking on the telephone to Aunt Agnes. Over in Centerburg. I'll stop by with the car in about half an hour and we can go to the meeting together, she said. Because tonight was the night of the ladies the night the ladies club was meeting to discuss plans for a box social and to knit and sew for the Red Cross. I think I'll come along and keep Uncle Ulysses company. Well, you and Aunt Agnes are at the meeting, said Homer. So after Homer had combed his hair and his mother had looked to see if she had her knitting instructions and had looked and had the right size needles, they started for town. Homer's Uncle Ulysses and Aunt Agnes have a very up-and-coming lunch room over in Centerburg, just across from the courthouse on the town square. Uncle Ulysses is a man with advanced ideas and a weakness for labor-saving devices. He equipped the lunchroom with automatic toasters, automatic coffee maker, automatic dishwasher, and an automatic donut maker. All just the latest thing in labor-saving devices. Aunt Agnes would 
throw up her hands and sigh every time Uncle Ulysses bought a new labor-saving device. Sometimes she became unkindly disposed toward him for days and days. She was of the opinion that Uncle Ulysses just frittered away his spare time over at the barber shop with the sheriff and the boys. So, what was the good of a labor-saving device that gave you more time to fritter? When Homer and his mother got to Sunderburg, they stopped at the lunchroom. And after Aunt Agnes had come out and said, My, how that boy does grow. Which is what she always said. She went off with Homer's mother in the car. Homer went into the lunchroom and said, Howdy, Uncle Ulysses. Oh, hello, Homer. You're just in time, said Uncle Ulysses. I've been going over this automatic donut maker, donut machine, oiling the machinery and cleaning the works. Wonderful things, these labor-saving devices. Yep, agreed Homer, and picked up a cloth and started polishing the metal trimmings while Uncle Ulysses tinkered with the inside workings. Oop, poof, poof, sighed Uncle Ulysses. And look here, Homer. You've got a mechanical mind. See if you can find... See if you can find where these two pieces fit in. I'm going across to the barber shop for a spell. Because there's something I've got to talk to the sheriff about. There won't be much business here until the double feature is over, and I'll be back before then. Then, as Uncle Ulysses went out the door, he said, Uh, Homer, after you get the pieces in place, would you mind mixing up a batch of donut batter and putting it in the machine? You could turn the switch and make a few donuts to have on hand for the crowd after the movie, if you don't mind, okay? Oh, if you don't mind. Okay, said Homer. I'll take care of everything. A few minutes later, a customer came in and said, Good evening, bud. Homer looked up from putting the last piece in the donut machine and said, Good evening, sir. What can I do for you? Well, young feller, I'd like a cup of coffee and some donuts, said the customer. I'm sorry, mister, but we won't have any donuts for about half an hour until I can mix some dough and start this machine. I could give you some very fine sugar rolls instead. Well, bud, I'm in a real hurry. So I'll just have a cup of coffee. I'm in no real hurry. So I'll just have a cup of coffee and wait around a bit for the donuts. Fresh donuts are always worth waiting for, is what I've always, what I always say. Okay, said Homer, and he drew a cup of coffee from Uncle Ulysses' super automatic coffee maker. Nice place you've got here, said the customer. Oh, yes, replied Homer. This is a very up-and-coming lunchroom with all the latest improvements. Yes, said the stranger. Must be good business. I'm in business, too. A traveling man in outdoor advertising. I'm a sandwich man. Mr. Gabby's my name. My name is Homer, and I'm glad to meet you, Mr. Gabby. It must be a fine profession, traveling and advertising sandwiches. Oh, no, said Mr. Gad Gabby. I don't advertise sandwiches. I just wear any kind of ad. One sign on front and one sign on behind. This way. Like a sandwich, you know what I mean? Oh, I see. That must be fun. And you travel too? asked Homer as he got out the flour and the baking powder. Yeah, I ride the rods between jobs on freight trains. You know what I mean? Yes, but isn't that dangerous? asked Homer. Of course there's a certain amount of risk, 
but you take any method a tra a travel these days, it's all dangerous, you know? You know what I mean? Now take airplanes, for instance. Just then, a large, shiny black car stopped in front of the lunchroom, and a chauffeur helped a lady out of the car door. They both came inside, and the lady smiled at Homer and said, We've stopped for a light snack. Some donuts and coffee would be simply marvelous. Then Homer said, I'm sorry, ma'am, but the donuts won't be ready until I make the batter and start Uncle Ulysses' donut machine. Well, now, aren't you a clever young man to know how to make donuts? Well, blushed Homer. I've really never done it before, but I've got a recipe to follow. No, young man, you simply must allow me to help. You know, I haven't made donuts for years, but I know the rest, best recipe for donuts. It's marvelous and really must try it. Must use it. But ma'am, said Homer, now just wait till you taste these donuts, said the lady. Do you have an apron, she asked, and she took off her fur coat and her rings and her jewelry and rolled up her sleeves. Charles, she said to the chauffeur, hand me the baking powder. That's right. And young man, we'll need some nutmeg. So Homer and the chauffeur stood by and handed things and cracked the eggs. Well, the lady mixed and stirred. Mr. Gabby sat on his stool, sipped his coffee, and looked down with great interest. There, said the lady, when all the ingredients were mixed, just wait till you taste these donuts. It looks like an awful lot of batter, said Homer, as he stood on a chair and poured it into the donut machine with the help of the chauffeur. It's about ten times as much as Uncle Ulysses ever makes. But wait till you taste them, said the lady with an eager look and a smile. Homer got down from the chair and pushed a button on the machine marked start. Rings of batter started dropping into the hot fat. After a ring of batter was cooked, on one side, the automatic gadget turned it over, and the other side would cook. Then another automatic gadget gave the donuts a little push, and it rolled neatly down a little chute, all ready to eat. That's simply, that's a simply fascinating machine said the lady as she waited for the first donut to roll out. Here, young man, you must have the first one. You know, isn't that just too delicious? Isn't that simply marvelous? Yes, ma'am, it's very good, replied Homer, as the lady handed the donut handed donuts to Charles and Mr. Gabby and asked if they didn't think they were simply divine donuts. It's an old family recipe, said the lady with pride. Homer poured some coffee for the lady and her chauffeur, and for Mr. Gabby, and a glass of milk for himself. Then they all sat down at the lunch counter to enjoy another few donuts apiece. I'm glad you enjoy my donuts, said the lady. But now, Charles, we really must be going. If you will just take this apron, Homer... And put two dozen donuts in a bag to take along. We'll be on our way. And Charles, don't forget to pay the young man. She rolled down her sleeves. And put on her jewelry. Then Charles managed to get her into her big fur coat. Good night, young man. I haven't had so much fun in years. I really haven't, said the lady. And she went out the door and into the big shiny car. Those are sure good donuts, said Mr. Gabby, as the car moved off. You bet, said Homer. 
Then he and Mr. Gabby stood and watched the automatic donut machine make donuts. After a few dozen more donuts had rolled down the little chute, Homer said, I guess that's enough donuts to sell to the after-theater customers. I better turn the machine off for a while. Homer pushed the button marked stop, and there was a click, but nothing happened. The rings of batter kept right on dropping into the hot fat, and the automatic, automatic gadget kept right on turning them over. And another automatic gadget kept right on giving them a little push. And the donuts kept right on rolling down the little chute. All ready to eat. That's funny, said Homer. I'm sure that's the right button. He pushed it again, but the automatic donut maker kept right on making donuts. Well, I guess I must have put one of those pieces in backwards, said Homer. Then it might stop if you push the button mark start, said Mr. Gabby. Homer did, and the donut still kept rolling down the little chute. Just as regular as a clock can tick. I guess we could sell a few more donuts, said Homer. But I'd better telephone Uncle Ulysses over at the barber shop. Homer gave the number, and while he was waiting... For someone to answer, he counted 37 donuts rolled down the little chute. Finally, someone answered, Hello, this is Sarber Barbershop. Oh, Sarber B Hop. I mean, the barbershop. Oh, hello, Sheriff. This is Homer. Could I speak to Uncle Ulysses? Well, he's playing pinochle right now, said the sheriff. Anything I can tell him? Yes, said Homer. I pushed the button, Mark, stop, on the donut machine, but the rings of batter kept right on dropping into the hot fat, and an automatic gadget kept right on turning them over, and another automatic gadget keeps giving them a little push, and the donuts keep right on rolling down the little chute. It won't stop. Okay. Hold the hire, I mean, hold the wire, and I'll tell him. I'll tell. Then Homer looked over his shoulder and counted another 21 donuts, rolled down the little chute, all ready to eat. Then the sheriff said, he'll be right over. He's just got to finish his hand. That's good, said Homer. Goodbye, sheriff. The window was full of donuts, by now, so Homer and Mr. Gabby had to hustle and start stacking them on plates and trays and lining them on the counter. Sure are a lot of donuts, said Homer. You bet, said Mr. Gabby. I lost count at 1,202, and that was quite a while back. People had begun to gather outside the lunchroom window, and someone was saying, There are almost as many donuts as there are people in Centerburg. And I wonder how in tarnation, tarnation Ulysses thinks he can sell all of them. Every once in a while, someone would come inside and buy some. But while somebody bought two to eat and a dozen to take home, the machine made three dozen more. By this time, Uncle Ulysses and the sheriff arrived and pushed through the crowd. The lunch room was a calamity of donuts. Donuts in the window, donuts piled high on the shelves, donuts stacked on plates, donuts lined up 12 deep all along the counter. Donuts still rolling down the little chute, just as regular as the clock can tick. Hello, Sheriff. Hello, Ulysses. Uncle Ulysses. We're having a little trouble here, said Homer. Well, I'll be dunked, said Uncle Ulysses. Durned if you won't be when Aggie gets home, said Sheriff. Mighty fine donuts, though. What do you do with them all, Ulysses? Uncle Ulysses groaned and said, What'll Aggie say? We'll never sell them all. 
Then, Mr. Gabby, who hadn't said anything for a long time, stopped piling donuts and said, What you need is an advertising man. You know what I mean? You got the donuts, you gotta create a market. Understand? It's balancing the demand with the supply. That sort of thing. Yup, said Homer. Mr. Gabby's right. We have to enlarge our market. He's an advertising sandwich man. So, if you hire him, we can walk up and down in the front of the theater and get the customers. You're hired, Mr. Gabby, said Uncle Ulysses. Then everybody pitched in and painted the signs in to get Mr. Gabby's sandwich between. They painted Sail on Donuts in big letters on the window, too. Meanwhile, the rings of batter kept right on dropping into the hot fat, and an automatic gadget kept right on turning them over, and another automatic gadget kept right on giving them a little push, and the donuts kept right on rolling down the little chute, just as regular as a clock can tick. I certainly hope this advertising works, said Uncle Ulysses, wagging his head. Aggie will certainly throw a fit if it doesn't. The sheriff went outside to keep order because there was quite a crowd by now, all looking at the donuts and guessing how many thousands there were and watching new ones roll down the little chute just as regular as a clock can tick. Homer and Uncle Ulysses kept stacking donuts. Once in a while, somebody bought a few, but not very often. Then, Mr. Gabby came back and said, Say, you know, there's not much use of me advertising at the theater. The show's all over, and besides, almost everybody in town is out front watching that machine make donuts. Zeus, said Uncle Ulysses, we must get rid of these donuts before Aggie gets here. Looks like you will have to hire a truck to... Wall em away. I mean, haul them away, said the sheriff, who had just come in. Just then there was a noise and a shoving out front, and the lady from the shiny black car and her chauffeur came pushing through the crowd into the lunchroom. Oh, gracious, she gasped, ignoring the donuts. I've lost my diamond bracelet, and I know I left it here on the counter, she said pointing to the place where the donuts were piled in stacks of two dozen. Yes, ma'am. I guess you forgot it when you helped me make the batter, said Homer. They then moved all the donuts around and looked for the diamond bracelet, but they couldn't find it anywhere. Meanwhile, the donuts kept rolling down the little chute, just as regular as a clock can tick. After they had looked all around, the sheriff cast a suspicious eye on Mr. Gitt. Gabby. But Homer said, He's all right, Sheriff. He didn't take it. He's a friend of mine. Then the lady said, I'll offer a reward of $100 for the bracelet. It really must be found. It really must. Now don't you worry, lady, said the Sheriff. I'll get your bracelet back. Zeus, this is terrible, said Uncle Ulysses. First all, of these donuts... Then on top of that, a lost diamond bracelet. Mr. Gabby tried to comfort him, and he said, There's always a bright side. The machine will probably run out of batter in an hour or two. If Mr. Gabby hadn't been quick on his feet, Uncle Ulysses would have knocked him down, sure as fate. Then, while the lady wrung her hands and said, We must find it, we must. And Uncle Ulysses was moaning about what Aunt Agnes would say. The sheriff was eyeing Mr. Gabby. Homer sat down and thought hard. Before twenty more donuts could roll down the little chute, he shouted, Say, I know where the bracelet is. It was laying here on the counter and got mixed up in the batter by mistake. The bracelet is cooked inside one of these donuts. Why... I really believe you're right, said the lady, through her tears. Isn't that amazing? Simply amazing. 
I'll be darned, said the sheriff. Oh, 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 moaned Uncle Ulysses. Now we have to break up all these donuts to find it. Think of the pieces. Think of the crumbs. Think of what Aggie will say. Nope, said Homer. We don't have to break them up. I've got a plan. So Homer and the advertising man took some cardboard and some paint and painted another sign. They put the sign in the window, and the sandwich man wore two more signs that said the same thing and walked around the crowd out front. Then the donuts began to sell. Everybody wanted to buy donuts, dozens of donuts. Fresh donuts, two for five cents while they last. $100 prize for finding a bracelet inside a donut. P.S. You have to give the bracelet back. And that's not all. Everybody bought coffee to dunk the donuts in, too. Those that didn't buy coffee bought milk or soda. It kept Homer and the lady and the chauffeur and Uncle Ulysses and the sheriff busy waiting on the people who wanted to buy donuts. When all but the last couple hundred donuts had been sold, Rupert Black shouted, I got it! And sure enough, there was the diamond bracelet inside of his donut. Then Rupert went home with a hundred dollars. The citizens of Centerburg went home full of donuts. The lady and her chauffeur drove off with the diamond bracelet, and Homer went home with his mother when she stopped by with Aunt Aggie. As Homer went out the door, he heard Mr. Gabby say, Neatest trick of merchandising I ever seen. And Aunt Agony was looking skeptical while Uncle Ulysses was saying, The rings of batter kept right on dropping into the hot fat, and the automated, automatic gadget kept right on turning them over, and the other automatic gadget kept right on giving them a little push, and the donuts kept right on rolling down the little chute just as regular as a clock can tick. They just kept right on coming, and a coming, and a coming, and a coming. The end.